appreciate you guys being on today. I know you. Uh, I know your time is valuable, and, and, and I appreciate it. Um, I don't have any opening statements. It's not one of those deals. So, uh, what questions do you guys have for me? So, thanks, coach. Steve, I'll, I'll, Go ahead, Jack. and this is all, all Big Ten voting takes place this week, and uh, you know, media has a ballot, and also coaches have a ballot. And I'm looking at this ballot, and I, I want to get your thoughts on just how challenging it is to fill this thing out, given how great the league is. How do you even go about doing that? <laughs> hey, Jerry. <laughs> uh, I mean, how do you? I mean, honestly, how do you? I, I mean, it's when you start looking at the names of the guys in the league, you know, we're getting ready to play Marcus Carr, who you know, can you do any more, uh, you know, for, for a team than what he does? And then. Wiesenkamp, and how about Marcel at Maryland, and how about Trace Jackson Davis? How, how about EJ Liddell at Ohio State? The kind of year you know that he's having, and you know last night Myron Jones for Penn State. And, I mean, um, Kofi, uh, Travion Williams. I mean, I'm just giving you Luca Garza. I mean, you, you know, where do you go when you know some really good basketball players? aren't going to be able to be honored and they, they truly deserve it. And, you know, but they're saying this is the best two year run of, of the you know best league in the country. So um, you got a lot of really good players and uh, you, you know, I haven't broken down that Rubik's cube yet, uh, Jerry, of, of who am I? And then, you know, uh, a lot of it is how, you know, they played against you too when you, you make votes, but that's not really fair because, you know, um, you know, there's going to be a lot of deserving guys, and, you know, that's why it's the best league in the country. But, uh, yeah, where do you start? I mean, every single team has two or three players that, you know, Wiggins from Maryland. I mean, I just go down, you know, Trice. I mean, and, you know, Dimitri Trice at Wisconsin. Like, how do you eliminate him from, you know? And, uh, you know, just, just really, really difficult task, and it's not going to be any easier for you either. So, uh, you, you know, you do the best you can, and you know that a lot of guys that are really deserving are, uh, aren't going to be, but there's a lot of guys that are really important to their teams, and, um, you know, you hope kids can get beyond that stuff. Everyone's valuable. Every guy on every team, you know, you need in a league like this, and you need them to be healthy and do their job and, and be really good, you know, because there are so many, so many good players. But real difficult task, and I'll attack that, you know, after, after Monday. Just as a follow-up, what do you what do you think of Miles Johnson's cat, uh, candidacy for Big East Defensive Player of the Year? I mean, he d deserve it. You know, just to, you know um, the improvements that he's made. I mean, I really think we have you, you know he can really guard um, block shots, steals. If you factor all of it in, and he's gotten better every year, and now he can guard multiple positions. I mean. Uh, you know, he's had a great year on that end of the floor. Jacob Young on the perimeter has had a, as good a year as any guard, in, you know, in this league, too. So we, we have, you know, some very deserving, you know, candidates, you, you know, too, for a lot of these different awards. We, you know, we really do. And, and, and Miles, certainly, and if you look at his improvement from day one to now, you, you would just give him the award because um, his improvement has been unbelievable. He still has more to do, and, and uh, that's the exciting part. But he can, you know truly uh, affect the game, you know, on that end of the floor in a lot of ways. And he guards people. He, you know, if you ever counted, uh, you know, plays to that, you know, um, teams knew he was rotating and coming their way, like plays that he's kind of intimidated and plays that he's kind of broke up and, you know, also tips and some other things that he gets with his quick hands. I mean, he's, uh, he's really deserved. Thanks, Steve. You got it. I'll go to Bobby and then Brian Fonte. Steve, what's the mood been like of the team over the last few days since the Nebraska game? Yeah, awesome, Bobby. These guys are great. They, they, they're great. Um, we had a good fun practice yesterday. These guys have great approaches. You know, these, these are waters we've been in many times, you know. So guys have been great. And uh, in a league like this, I think every coach, too, that I've spoken to, you, you know, like – this is, uh, this is what we signed up for, and, and I know our guys are excited. We're playing meaningful games in February. It's great. It's great. We've come a long way uh, with the program. Been there before, too. So kids, the kids are the kids are always great. The kids are always great. They're resilient. They move on. They, they do a good job with that. They're probably better than me. 
Steve, the three-point line's been a bit of an issue over the past month, shooting uh, 24% over the last six games, hasn't haven't shot better than 25% in five out of those six games. Is there any anything in particular you can pinpoint to those issues, why that's becoming a, an issue? Yeah, you know, I, you know, Brian, I always just look at things, you know, differently than everyone else with stats. You know, I, with taking good shots, then shoot the ball, you know, like, you know, that that's more than anything. And when they go in, we're the best three-point shoot team in the world against Indiana, and then we, you know, you know, are you taking good shots? Yeah, they are. Are you rebounding? Are you defending? You know, it always goes down to that. You know, some days the ball goes in, and it's great because I watch college basketball. We're, we're not the only team, and uh, in, in the pros too. You know, um, going in is not like a birthright every time you shoot the ball. You know, we can rebound better. That's what we really need to do: um, take good shots and then rebound some of the misses. But you know, um, everyone else will talk about you know those percentages and all that stuff. But basketball is not like a every time you shoot, you're guaranteed it's going in kind of a, a sport. And so I never really get too caught up in, in, in into that stuff. And, you know, some stretches we've shot the ball unbelievable at the beginning, of, you know, like some stretches we were, we're capable three point shooters. Guys are taking good looks and a couple tough ones when the shot clock's going down, but that happens in every game. And, you know, I trust, you know, trust my guys and, you know, goes in but let's play defense and, and, and not have to depend on that so to be clear are you are you happy with the you know the shot selection for the most part guys are getting shots is yeah i mean i watched it you know and, and a few guys you know one thing one thing we do as coaches we watch it and watch it and, and then break it down and you know everything else you know we got good looks in the last you know in the last game we we, we, we really did and if we continue to get good looks like that they didn't, we didn't make them in nebraska but you know and we've also had you know, games where we've made all those looks or made a lot of them. So, you know, that's what happens. And don't dictate your game or your game plan based around the ball going in or not. You know, so many other ways you can affect the game. And everyone will talk about that. And everyone talks about free throw percentages and stuff. No one has actually about that recently. But, you know, like take good shots, shoot the ball. We got good shooters, you know, most since you got to kind of kind of look at that. We'll go to Aaron Brightman and then Chris Nowalski. Coach, uh, Minnesota obviously has some injury issues right now. Uh, how difficult does that make for you to prepare for them uh, versus the last time you faced them? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think, too, it's this time of the year, too, for everybody, you know, banged up with some injuries. I mean, you just never know, and, and you got to, you know, be prepared for be prepared for everything. You know, senior night two there, so you don't know, you know, what they're going to do. And, and I'm never as concerned with the lineups that they have, just more concerned with, you know, the lineups to end the game with. Um, that's who we kind of focus in always. Because anybody can start, that doesn't mean, um, that doesn't mean that's the team that they're going to put on the floor. So, you know, don't get caught up in it. And especially with teams with a lot of injuries, sometimes teams are on a good run and, have the same starting lineup, and then once you start factoring in senior nights and injuries, you can have any kind of lineup. But for the most part, you, you, you kind of know who's playing and log in the most minutes, and that's kind of what happens. Hey, Coach. Uh, the last couple of games, uh, the team has gotten out into uh, you know slow starts. Um, from watching the film, have you you know seen a reason yeah. why that has been the case? Yeah, actually, you know, I didn't, Nebraska, I, I really – didn't think we got off to a slow start. I thought we, we got off to a slow middle. Um, you know, our, our start was fine in that game. I know Indiana, we didn't get off to a great start, but, you know, we've had that. We've had some great starts, and we haven't had some good finishes. Indiana, bad start, good finish. You know, and Nebraska wasn't wasn't our start. When I watch it, you guys look at that, and we got down, but we really, in the first, you know, five, six minutes, we were, you know, we, we were right you know, where we should have been, you know, in the game. So, you know, we're, we're, we're really, and you guys don't probably, under, you know, like we're on to Minnesota. You can't change the results of the Indiana game. You can't change the results in the Nebraska game. I give Nebraska to put out they're playing good basketball and they're playing that at this time of the year. If the season was like a month longer, they may, you know, be one of those teams. They're in a good place and a good groove and, and that kind of thing. And, and, and we didn't play you know, as well as we needed to, obviously, but uh, start, you know, we, we're on to Minnesota and it's the only game right now and 
and that's a good part of this league. It kind of forces you to do you do that. There's there's no team in this league that um, isn't really good. I mean, Minnesota uh, is is a team that you know, they beat Michigan at home, they beat Iowa at home, they beat Ohio State at home, and they beat Purdue. Like you know, Minnesota's really good. You know, too, and and when they have an elite guard and and, and Marcus Carr, be as good a guard as there is in the country. So, um, you know, many challenges this league brings, and we're talking and, and spending our time focused on that. Go back to Jerry Carino. Just a quick update, Steve. You you mentioned after Nebraska that Paul was banged up. How's he doing? Yeah, I mean, he you know, Paul is one of those guys, Jerry. I think at this time of the year. If anyone's got bumps and bruises, and uh, it's Paul. So, you know, he's banged up. Um, you know, knowing Paul, uh, you know, he, he will, uh, uh, you know, do everything to get himself, you know, feeling better. But he's banged up, and, and it's not just from the Nebraska game. It's from the wear and tear of, you know, the season and, and, and how he plays. And, uh, you know, but Paul's great. Paul's great. He always has a great approach and uh, always always ready to go. But, no, he, he's, uh, he's banged up. And, you uh, you know, a lot of them are too, but that's the time of the year too that if this happens. Not just us; it's, it's probably everyone in the country. So it's, it's, it's a long year, and it's a real physical league. And, uh, you know, but I'm expecting him to be fine um, and, and and tough. You know, tough it like he always does. Do you do you ease up on your practices when this time of year because of that wear and tear? I mean, you have to be really smart. You know, and we're traveling too, and you know, all that kind of stuff. And I think, you know, part of it's the physical part, Jerry, too, and part of it's the mental part. It's been a long, you know, we've been in a bubble for a long time. and You know, part of it's that, too. So I think you got to be real smart. And, I, you know, Dave Van Dyke is the best. You know, we, we talk a lot about, you know, keeping their body sharp. And, you know, and, and a lot of that is, uh, you know, your practice time and what you're doing in practice and, you know, trying to keep it to the point and, um, you know, everything we we do is for the opponent that we're playing, you know, not a lot of fluff in the rest of practice. You know, if it doesn't have to do with beating, you know, the team you're getting ready to play, then, then we don't do it at this time of the year, you know. So you got to be really smart, you know, uh, with that and their bodies and, you know, how your body feels sometimes, how your mind, you know, feels too. So you got to do a lot of that in, in the middle of this pandemic to learning how to do that in the middle of, you know, the pandemic too, which is another thing that's, you know, on their, on their minds. Right, so, right. Uh, not, e not easy sometimes, but you, you get a good read. And some guys have those kind of bodies that they can just, you know, get through, you know, anything. And other guys really need to be smart with them. And you know, some guys are more banged up than others. So, you know, it's, it's, it's looking at your whole team and it's looking at every guy individually. So you got two ways you got to look at it, the whole team and what we got to do as a team. And then, Hey, how, how do we keep these guys, and their bodies and, and minds as sharp as they need to be. So it's a lot goes into that. And I'm thankful Dave Van Dyke, you know, fantastic um, job, you know, with, with guidance in, in those areas. Got two more for Coach. We'll go to Bobby and then Brian Fonseca. Steve, one game left. How would you assess Cliff's development over this first season? Yeah. Um, you know, uh, um, real proud, you know, of Cliff, too. Eight rebounds in, in, in the last game. Getting better and better. Things that you guys don't notice, um, you know, his defense has improved tremendously. Um, he's done an unbelievable job watching film, and he practices, you know, the right way, you know, every day. And, you know, it was, it was interesting. I was talking to him, you know, about Miles, and, you know, as Jerry asked about Miles being a candidate for that. And, you know, I told, you know, Cliff that as a freshman, Miles wasn't a candidate, you know, for anything, you know, and uh, – the improvement that he's made and same thing with, with Cliff and, and where he's grown with his screen coverages and the seven different ways we guard screens has been, you know, tremendous and getting better and better, getting the ball, getting up the floor, he rebounds in traffic. Um, you know, I do think the five weeks in the middle of the season, you know, really, you, you know, hurts because then it takes you two weeks after that to kind of get back to where you were. Um, but he's done, done like a really good job and, and great teammate and, He's got all the great qualities. So I'm, I'm real pleased with, you know, how far he's come and he's been thrown right into the middle of this. I mean, you know, you guys were mentioning names, but Robinson, Travion Williams, Luca Garza. I mean, you just continue to go through our, 
Trace Jackson Davis. You know, you just continue to go through all the different big guys that he has had to guard this year with all different skill sets and all the different coverages that he needs to, you know, be really good at. And he's, he's come, you know, he's come a, a really long way. And every single game is a totally different five man that he has to be prepared for. And that's not always easy in high school. You get to, there's really no five men. So you never play one. And now you come to college and you got 13 guys in our league who are probably all different at the five spot. And Hera at Penn State is the leading offensive rebounder in the country. Um, like you've got to guard him completely different. So, um, you know, he's had to navigate all that stuff. And that stuff's hard for freshmen. It really is. And people don't understand the complexities that, you know, you know that go into all that stuff. Um, so he's done a really good job. I'm, I'm real pleased to make a long answer short. I'm just really pleased. Steve, to follow up on that, how how good can Cliff be, do you think, as he keeps his development going? Yeah, I mean, Cliff, you know, the same thing to Miles when he's a freshman. How good, you know, where he is. You know, how good can you be when you got a, a, kid, a kid who's a worker already, who um, is a good teammate, who's a, a willing learner. Um, yeah, he can be terrific. He, he really has a chance to be. And, and, you know, our whole freshman class, even you know they haven't logged – you know, so for Cliff, a lot of minutes, those guys is getting better and better. They're going to be, they're going to be good, um, too. You know, and, and they would have benefited from a normal season of, of eleven non-conference games, um, too. But uh, yeah, real, real, you know, real pleased, and, and those guys are going to all be, you know, really important factors for us moving forward. And if I, if I can follow up on, on our our thoughts before, you mentioned that you know sometimes shots don't fall. When shots are not falling, how much does that? make it more difficult with the way defenses you know, guard you, maybe pack the paint. Just, just how, how does not shots not falling? How does that affect you? Yeah, I mean, you know, when shots fall, you know, Brian makes every, you know, you know, but, you know, you always have to prepare in a league like, you know, like you know, Maryland's one of the elite defensive teams in the country. Like, you know, like that's what they do as well as anybody. And, you know, Michigan, we play Michigan and, you know, you got to find alternative ways. You got to get second shots. I think it's important to get to the free throw line. Um, you know, but this is like a big boy league and, you know, some really good, you know, defensive teams. You still have to figure out, you know, we've won games this year where we didn't shoot the ball well at all. I mean, and, um, you know, don't dictate everything. And, you know, that's the worst way to dictate, um, you know, winning basketball games, try to outscore teams. There's not many teams in the country that just can do that every night. I mean, it's impossible. The NBA teams who can score at the highest level don't score every night. It's just, you know, it's, you know, travel, like you guys don't factor in all the different things. Maybe you're playing five games in a row. Maybe you're playing, you know, like there's a lot of things that go into it. Some guys are in good places, you know, mentally they're feeling good, you know. Other guys are in slumps or not, you know, like so there's so many that go into that, you know, defense and rebound and be connected and get through the obstacles of, of, a, of a game. Don't dictate it all on the, on the ball going in when the ball goes in. You know, it's, I guess it's I guess it's a little easier. All right, thanks, coach. We'll end it there. Hey guys, appreciate.